I will take it. You know exactly who is going to talk to you, and you know exactly how much he, uh, how, but, uh, how much interest he takes in in the future of the globe. And I think um, all I can say is to thank him very much for sparing the time to come and talk to us this evening. I have it, people. So, um, this this um, live thing is intended to be. Uh, an advertisement for anybody who's new that was going to come across this channel. Um, so I've got a few things that I want to um, speak to here firstly um, before I get to some of the other aspects. So it's not going to be a wee quick short couple of minute video unfortunately for anybody who is new that comes across this. It's not something that you can discuss you know in a, a, or understand in a wee short you know two minute, five minute, ten minute video. There's a fair bit to understand and to go through. So, first I'll start with, are you questioning the globe? You know, firstly I have to let you know that that's exactly who I am. I'm just a man who um, consider, considers himself born into a cult, culture, the same as everybody else. And, you know, you have that, that attribute that, you know, you're, you just take the world as it's presented to you, particularly when it's coming through the avenues of, you know, your parents and supposed authority. So I'm just the same as anybody else in that regard. I, you know, believed, I wouldn't say believed fully, I just assumed that what I had been told and what had been presented to me was, in fact, true. Um, just you know, see, make sure I'm working here, right? Um, so I believed, no, I'm not going to use that word. I just assumed that what I was told was the truth. So first and foremost, you have to understand that for me, a man in my position, that is the stance I come from. I question the validity of things that are put to me by other human beings through my experience. Now, when I turned my attention to try and understand and question this assumption that the Earth is a globe, um, I found that it was lacking um, in anything that would that would justify me continually holding um, that to be a, a, a true thing that I live on the exterior of a globe. Um, sorry, just bear with me, I'm getting distracted here. Um, so I lost my train of thought. Uh, <coughs> Right, so there's a few things that you have to understand before we get any further. That is the stance, you know, we were born into the claim it's a globe. That's what we have to question. Now, I know that it seems ridiculous because in people's eyes, people's minds, they have seen an image. They have seen the earth depicted to them on a TV screen. They have been told that there is a group of highly sophisticated highly intelligent, superior beings who, who who are going to a place known as the vacuum of space and have a vantage point of seeing our Earth as a whole from a distance. So it is going to seem ridiculous to people at first because people in our generations since the invention of the TV have taken things that they see on the TV to be factual and true. What you have to do is you have to remove yourself from that position. You have to understand that if I was to show you something on a TV screen that defied your known experience of reality, like, you know, a video of me flying or levitating, you would know through your intellectual honesty, your discernment, that there has to be some sort of trick. You understand through your own experience that that's not the case. You know people cannot fly. You know people cannot levitate. Okay? Unless they're using some form of advanced technology that we don't have a, a, a grasp on quite yet. So anything can be presented to you in the way of image. And it can be presented through a TV screen or in a picture, a painting, any of these things. You should know that that is in no way, shape or form um, enough to justify you accepting something as being true. That is the position I found myself in because I understand that, you know, images and what I see in the TV can be manipulated. They can, you know, um, 
portray reality in people in a, a way that is nonsensical to my understanding of the physical existence that I, I'm in. So you've seen it, you see it in Hollywood movies, you see it in, you know, all sorts of uh, TV programs, how, you know, they can edit and, um, you know, use sophisticated technology to make things appear as being real. So, again, you know, you have to remove yourself from that. And what I have to point out to you is, is that an image on your TV screen in no way, shape or form constitutes as any sort of scientific endeavour or scientific measurement of something being true. Okay? Now, when I say the word scientific and science, I am talking about it from my understanding and how I use the word. Science to me is, simply means exploration. It means a human being exploring the reality, the physical realm that we find ourselves in and seeing what we find. That's it. That's what exploration really should be. There is something totally different going on with what we call science and what people accept as science. What is happening is, is that you have institutions professing they are in the, under the guise of science, while at the same time they are pushing existential narratives. What I mean by existential narratives is stories of who we are, how we came to be, how the world came to be, what our future may be. These are existential fairy tales. That is not what real science is about. Real science, real exploration is about, you know, moving through the physical existence and finding what you find from one moment to the next. What you find in the natural world, what you find in regards to the substances within the natural world and the interaction of those substances. Okay, so when you look at mainstream now and what's been taught to your children and what was taught to you, it was a religious narrative, a story that is designed to encompass your psyche with a vision of who you are, where you are, and what life is. That should never be the case in real objective science. It should never be reading from storybooks and trying to give narratives like that. It should always be a pursuit from one day to the next, from one moment to the next, and advancing our understanding of the physical realm and the interaction of substances. Okay? So, that's what I mean by science. And you will note that, you know, the majority of mainstream and the institutions have, you know, wrapped science up an all-encompassing umbrella, and they just throw and pull out from that, you know, um, cesspool, whatever they see fit in order to push certain agendas and to fit whatever narratives it is that they're trying to push. Okay. So also, what you have to understand is even in the mainstream realms of science, um, there are subdivisions. Okay. So we have many different practices. You could call anything a science. If you wanted, you could call... Um, picking your nose, an art, a science. There is a science to picking your nose, getting the real nail the right size, the right shape, elongated enough to reach the right place. So we have to understand and, and you know express to each other when we're using these words. Language has been used in many different ways. And, you know, somebody else's um, attached definition to a particular word may be different to yours. So we have to iron these things out. We have to understand exactly what the language is and what the words actually mean. And if we're discussing the same things. So in mainstream science and in the scientific understanding, there is subdivisions. We have the natural sciences, which is encompassed as chemistry, physics and biology. Things that take to do with direct reality, how things operate, what the interaction is between substances, what you can create out of mixing different substances. Okay, that's real, um, real world practicality, dealing with the things in our direct reality. Okay, you also have other aspects. So you have the social sciences, which is today we cultures, you know, psychology, language. Um, also in that, these subdivisions, you have mathematics, which is classed as a formal science. 
It's a form of science because it is a language. It is only a useful tool, a useful uh, tool in regards to, um, you know, practical engineering or anything in reality that is practical and demonstrable. Mathematics is a very useful tool in order to describe, you know, measurements, dimensions, areas, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it, also, it always has to be attached to some aspect of our physical existence so that, you know, I can then, you know, measure something or create something and I can then give it a description which I can send to you and if you understand that language, you can decode the language and you can recreate the practical reference that, that I am referring to in my mathematical description. So it is a useful tool, but it is classed as a formal science because it is only a language. The other reason is, is because like any other language, I can use grammar to say Santa Claus is real, Santa Claus is not real. Both are gr grammatically correct. One is true, one is not. So mathematics is, is pretty much the same. In the realms of mathematics, you can go into the world of abstract, okay? Because it's just a language. You can create your axioms that you can start from and you can wander away and create mathematical constructs that work as an artistic abstract expression. But there's a difference when people are making abstract um, concepts through the use of mathematics and then trying to attach it to being some sort of natural aspect of our everyday reality. Which leads me on to talk a bit more about the globe. Okay, because the globe, heliocentrism, a big bang cosmology, an existential narrative that emanates from the Vatican. Okay, the very same religious institutions that dominated society and still do to a certain degree and push stories. Stories that are regarded as psychological mechanisms and tools to control you and I. We can get into that a bit further as I move along. But the globe, I'm going to state it right here and now, has nothing measurable. It has nothing practical, nothing demonstrable. It is a concept, a narrative that has been pushed um, and is backed up by sophistry. Sophistry, for anybody who doesn't know, is, is a use of language, rhetoric, um, sophisticated language that is designed to bamboozle you, to seem legitimate and to sway your opinion or your beliefs uh, into a particular narrative or agenda, okay? It's, it's, it's just a, a tool of manipulation. It's not honest, it's not objective. Um, it's, it's, it's just used to push whatever agenda or narrative somebody is, is trying to push. So, again, you're going to have to excuse me because I'm trying to be con as concise as I possibly can and explain this to anybody new who's coming across so that you may have a better understanding and you also know exactly who I am. Because again, I'm openly inviting anybody to, to come and discuss anything with me. And if you're, you know, want to discuss the objective reality with me, I have a certain set criteria um, that, that I will accept. And my criteria is practicality. Any claim that's being made to me about my objective reality must be in the form of practical demonstration. Okay? No language, 